Hi, everyone. Welcome to another recorded book discussion with Ann Arbor District Library staff for our Black Lives Matter series. Um, tonight, we are discussing the novel What the Fireflies Knew by Kai Harris. And uh, before we get started, oh, thank you. Anne's holding it up. Um, before we get started, let's just quickly maybe introduce ourselves. Um, I'll start. I'm Lucy. I'm a library tech in the youth department. And I do youth programming, but I also really love uh, hosting book events and participating in them. I'm Beth, and I'm part of the outreach team of AADL. And um, yeah, so a lot of different things we do. And my name is Jacob. I'm also a library tech on the outreach team, along with Beth and Marissa. And um, I love doing these book discussions and being able to read books and talk about them. It's so much fun. And Jake, Jake spoiled it. My name is Marissa and I'm also on the outreach team. We are really dominating tonight. And I also really love being a part of this series. I'm Anne and I am a book processor, primarily working at Westgate. All right. So, um, Wait, what the Fireflies Knew is, uh, I guess, historical. It takes place in 1995, so that would make it historical now. Uh, first question is, what did everyone think of it? Or what was your experience of reading it? I I liked the book. Um, it just remi it reminded me of just different people I've known in my life. Um, their stories, I, I mean, just kind of the, I think what, what struck me is just the trauma that, uh, the young person, I forget her name now, um, was going KB. through. Oh yeah. Yeah. KB. That's right. KB. And, um, and just like, how alone she she felt and it just it was sad and it just it what it made me it made me think of other people that I grew up with that maybe were going through things that we never knew about I enjoyed reading this book as well um because the book is so nostalgic and I think a lot of what the book is just kind of recentering you in a the mind of a child um, a lot of it was just kind of enjoying these small moments through a child's eyes, hunting for rocks, making friends. Um, I did find myself holding my breath, waiting for the something traumatic to happen because it was just relatively peaceful, relatively, of course. And then, of course, something does happen. And uh, I struggle with my reaction to it. Um, yeah, I'm eager to, to to discuss the book more with you guys. I did not love reading this. <laughs> um, I got a text earlier from Jacob that said, you only gave us two stars. <laughs> and I said, I said what I said. <laughs> um, I spent a lot of the book trying to figure out why this was shelved in the adult shelves, just because this felt very much like a kid's book. Like it was written like a kid's book, the language, like it just felt like a youth fiction, which is not necessarily bad. It's just like kind of confused me of well, why this was in the adult section and being pitched as an adult book. And then, yeah, there's a part where I was like, oh, okay, there it is. Like I see why this is shelved, how it is, um, which, yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about that part later. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess I just don't read a lot of kids fiction in general so I just didn't really jive with it too much um and then this book had been compared so much online to like salvage the bones which I really loved and then so I maybe just had high expectations or different expectations but it just felt like the pacing was very slow um yeah I didn't have the same slow pacing issues. For me, it went fairly 
quickly, but I also enjoy books that spend a lot of time in the weeds. So, um, and this one didn't, it's only 270 pages long, so it's not um, dense or anything. Uh, I was just struck by kind of the highlighting of how important certain relationships are and then just seeing them kind of fail in her life um, or not be there or not live up to what she wants. Uh, and you just really, really want a win for this little girl because it just feels like she should have an easier life than she does. Um, but so I found the story compelling. I'm not going to necessarily put this on like one of my top 10 reads or anything, uh, but I found it engaging. Yeah, I I am. Um, I have sort of agree with everything, something that everyone said, but I think that um, I like as a coming of age book, I thought it was a pretty interesting way to do that. Like looking at someone and how she deals with her trauma and that's sort of her coming of age, but she's also this regular kid doing, like you were saying, Jacob, like collecting rocks and collecting fireflies, which I think speaks to the fact that like those things can go hand in hand and you sort of have to grow through them. But like you, Marissa, I, I, I guess I want to note, like we sort of touched on it, but what you think more broad or like in a larger sense about the choice of an 11 year old narrator and maybe why the author chose to do that uh because I do some I struggled with that voice a little bit uh, sometimes um so I wondered I found myself thinking like I, I just thinking about that narrative choice and I don't know if, if other people thought it was effective or if they had thoughts about why it was the voice that it was I I agree with you, Marissa, about um, why it was a, that it was an adult book. And I don't even, I mean, I guess I knew it was an adult book, but as I was reading it, it didn't feel like one. And I wasn't really placing it as one. Um, I thought it was more of a, a young adult. Um, and I don't, I don't feel like there was anything, like I, whatever the event was, I've seen a lot of this sort of and other kinds of um, bad things happening to people in youth books. So I don't know. It was an interesting concept there. Yeah, there were parts where it felt like it is being told by an 11 year old. And then there were also parts that felt like it was an adult clearly writing as if I were like, you know, the re the fuzzy lens, the like more complex, maybe rationale, um, and like some flowery language. Like it just it it kind of waffled that a little bit. It didn't feel necessarily like one or the other, which is maybe why I struggled. Um and yeah, I spent a lot of time thinking like if I had a daughter who was eleven years old, like would I want her reading this? Like, cause I was thinking so much about like what this book is and like yeah I think I would um like I don't think it was out of place for what kids can like process and think about um and yeah so I don't know depends on the kid really yeah yeah, yeah. I I think back to and I really should have the copy of the book sit next to yeah. me but I want to say the author's note, or there's like a little, there's like a little note before the book starts. And it talks about how this novel was born from a writing exercise in which the author was asked to like as accurately as possible recreate a memory. And then I think later on in that same note, the author talks about how a, a goal or maybe a, a, a goal of the book is to re is for adults to experience a story through a child's eye or I'm butchering that or there's there's something like that yeah I think you're right <laughs> so I was like I was like okay I, I'm, I'm gonna do that and I think sometimes I was completely under the spell and then sometimes I wasn't like Marissa said um I think a, a really difficult 
uh, ambitious thing for this author to do would was having that child's voice and not dipping into this sort of like wisdom reflection that kids wouldn't be able to do. But sometimes in the book, that reflection doesn't happen and I was frustrated. So it, it, uh, I'm all over the place. And, you know, in regards to the big thing that happens in the book, I, I, I things happen. Well, shit happens. And it wasn't fair for me to read the whole book and go, now don't hit me with some, on page 200, some traumatic thing. And then it did. And I was like, that's unfair. But that's also how life works. So I was, I, I, I'm angry and I feel, not angry, um, I'm justified in, in my feelings and I'm also unjustified in my feelings and I'm reckoning with, with um, knowing that. I felt yeah, like I'm bracing oh, myself, oh, sorry. Oh no, go ahead. You, you I was go bracing ahead. myself through the book just because of like, what is the big bad thing that's going to be revealed? And it was kind of not just one big, I mean, there's a whole bunch of, yeah. I mean, when a kid's dad dies, when a parent dies, you know, they, they that's a really traumatic event and they need nurturing. And I feel like the child was just left there with, without any answers. And, and then her mom wasn't there either. So just a lot of confusion. Yeah, that, I was wondering if that was part of the choice of having um, her be so young and and naive is that like there are, I mean, right in the beginning of this book, she's talking about her finding her dad or they found their dad dead on the stairs. So not only did her father die, but he died like in a pretty traumatic way. But I think that the, the thing about KB is because she's so young, she doesn't fully understand the whole situation. And she kind of learns more and more about it. And like, she doesn't really know why her mom's left. She thinks she can fix it with money. So I, I was wondering if like the, by having it be this naive 11 year old, you could have her be figuring these things out as she's going along. And sometimes as a reader, or usually as a reader, we know ahead of her, but, um, that was one reason I, I thought maybe that she chose that intentionally naive voice so that, you know, so that it wasn't just like being stated, but we were kind of seeing how she figured things out. And then that was really how she sort of grew, I guess, in, in the book. Yeah, if you went a lot younger, like her initial interactions, well, all of her interactions with the white family across the street would have felt kind of weird because at that point you would have assumed that she would have encountered blatant racism in her daily life. Um, so there are things like that that you kind of needed the younger narrator for. You also needed it for that kind of childish, childlike joy that exists even amongst all of the trauma, like the just kind of ability of the resilience of children um, and how they can process more than adults a lot of times think they can. Uh, and I think that when her granddaddy started like actually speaking truthfully with her, that was such a huge trust shift for her. Um, yeah, I I don't know where I was going. With I think it also. Oh, no, I think. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say that even though KB is eleven, and her sister being fifteen, I think, or just turning fifteen, and then the mom being an adult, like it, you kind of get little pictures of how each person is handling their grief over this event and how you know because obviously her sister Nia is also like pretty messed up from this and like not handling it well either and like in the absence of any kind of guidance on how to process everything that they've been through and then their mom also abandons them it's like you know there's a lot going on 
which and her mom is also dealing with a lot of issues and so it's like you know she's making this choice to leave them with her dad to get help for her own stuff so that she can be a better parent so you know we're getting these little pictures of how different ages are dealing with it and then kind of coming together at the end um so it's like I think it's useful that the main character was 11 like Anne said it made things easier to explain in a way but then it's also helpful to have an older sister to kind of be a reflection in a way yeah I was wondering what oh so go ahead no you go ahead Anne just exploring the um besides this specific scenario exploring that kind of change in a sister's relationship um when one of them is going into the teenage years and isn't necessarily as interested in their sister um and hanging out with their sister so you've got that blended with the um kb just kind of feeling abandoned with this move and then feeling like she's losing her sister too um it's just like that is a natural change for sisters um, that, or any siblings, that I felt like they explored really well. One of my favorite parts of the book is the relationship between Nia and KB, especially through the eyes of KB, because um, there's this moment where KB is like, I just want to be friends with my sister. I just want to hang out with my sister. And then the, the, literally the next thing is like, your hair's ugly. Is KB telling that to her sister? And I'm like, oh, that's siblings. Um, I think when a book is, is, is nostalgic in this way, the best thing it can do is kind of reveal these small parts of life that we might have forgotten or overlooked. And, and we get to kind of revisit them or relive them. And that particular moment was was a moment where I was like, uh, this is good. I've, it was really fulfilling for me as a reader. It was it was authentic sounding, you know, they um, their relationship and yeah, just the way they bantered. And, and I, I've really, I felt bad for KB. Like I just wanted her sister to be nice to her, you know, and they needed each other, but <clears throat> yeah I agree the their relationship was also one of my favorite things about the book and like what Jacob said Jacob and I had talked about this earlier um where like so many other things were kind of like overly logic or reflected upon in a different way and then some of the the sibling stuff was like yeah I love my sister I'm absolutely gonna start a fight <laughs> <laughs> and like no not a single thought really of why it's just like a, a reaction and that just feels so real <laughs> and was funny and sad and all of the feelings about siblings. Um. Yeah, I, I liked their relationship too. And I think it's interesting because we finally think, like learn a little bit about why Nia has been behaving the way she's been behaving. And um, it's like, I think you were saying, Marissa, that everyone has their own grief that they go through. So I thought to myself, like what would it have been like if the book had been narrated from Nia's point of view and it would have been a, a totally different book um it just you know I was thinking about a different a different voice and a different age but I also think their relationship's really interesting because in a way it's one of the things that gets KB in sort of gets in like she's just part of this looking up to Nia I feel like she's just trying to imitate her she's like angry at her she's running away but then she's also doing this like acting out in a way that she sees her sister like when she's you know um she sees her sister doing stuff with a, guy, a boy so she's like well is, am I gonna do this or you know I feel like that's sort of motivated in seeing what her sister dad did but also being angry at her sister so it's really like rooted in that relationship and then ultimately it leads to like the the biggest I mean like the the biggest trauma that happens in the space of this book like I would say her father dying is pretty traumatic um but yeah so I think that like the relationship had those 
really authentic moments, but it was also such a grounding piece of the of the whole book. That yeah. Um yeah. Bouncing off what you had just said, I think one of the biggest questions as children that that children ask is how am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to be doing? Which is kind of an overgeneralization of of really what I mean, but it's you know, am I supposed to be riding bikes with my neighbors? Or am I, or am I supposed to be collecting rocks? Or am I supposed to be talking to boys like my sister's doing? Um, I forgot what it was like to be a kid and kind of be like, now who am I, what am I supposed to be doing in this whole little life thing? Um, so that was another one of those kind of golden moments in the nostalgia where I was reminded of, of an experience that I had as a kid that I had forgotten about or a feeling or a, a feeling is a better word for it. Um, and yet there is that direct line between her relationship with her sister and then um, the big trauma, what we're, we'll just call it the big trauma that she experiences later in the book. Um, I hadn't made that connection exactly, or I, I had, but I hadn't seen it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I think she doesn't have a lot of, well, she doesn't really have any guidance and because no grownups are explaining things to her, she's sort of left to come up with her own conclusions about why these things are happening. And then there's this piece where she's like got this connection to this book, Anne of Green Gables. Um, so it's almost like she's looking for herself there and she's finding ways that she relates, but that's a totally different situation uh it's just interesting to think about where she can seek guidance and how she doesn't really I think it, she sort of expects to be let down after a point you know like no one's gonna remember my birthday um so I guess in, in thinking about it I do think like her her coming of age was pretty well well explored in this book I wonder um what if you have any thoughts about other characters or just like character development in general like I was I thought the whole thing with the neighbors was kind of interesting because it was kind of there but not really there I don't know um but other characters too if you would have liked to see more of them or if they seemed fully developed I, I I liked the grandfather. I was really glad she had him in her life, their lives, and um, he was able to take care of them and <clears throat> get them what they need. And then the whole uh, the family reunion where she got to meet her uncles and cousins, and so yeah, I was I was just trying to imagine what that would be like to, you know, be like suddenly, you know, this whole new side of a whole nother side of your family is revealed to you. Um, it just, it just added to like what the, what was happening to, to KB, um, you know, the big picture of loss, trauma, loss, trying to come back to, you know, getting a better relationship and then finding new people in our lives. <clears throat> I have to say there were a couple of uh, things that just took me right back to my childhood. Um, and one of them was um, the running away, uh, not because I ran away as a child, but I have, I had friends that packed up their backpack and went set out you know just no real plan whatsoever and it's such I don't know if that's something that still happens with kids um we're in a slightly different world than we were then uh and now I don't remember what the other thing was that reminded me of my childhood nope if I think of it I definitely ran away as a kid. I mean, like, ran away to the backyard and then was like, oh, I'm just outside and have nowhere to go because I'm a kid. <laughs> um, 
And it's funny, my dad has, like, the exact same story. He, like, packed up a grocery bag with his stuff and just, like, walked down the block and was like, oh, now what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's (laughs) kind of universal, depending on the everything else around that. But um, about character development, I think the other... There's something you said about the white neighbor kids um, where maybe this is projecting, but, like... I was kind of reading them as having at least a semi-abusive mother who like they're obviously terrified of her they play when she's not around like they're very careful in their awareness of like where she is and what they can be doing and like her obviously like extreme reaction to them having made friends with KB um and so like if you're looking at that moment where then the mom is yelling at KB for borrowing the bicycle or stealing the bicycle as she was trying to claim um and kb being so disappointed that they didn't want to stand up for her mm-hmm. it's like if you're in an abusive household though or like with an with a mother who is unstable to some degree at least like i understand why they wouldn't in that moment because they're also children and so like hopefully they grow up to be able to do that and like you know, I'm like, kids are kids, and they have friends with everybody, and hopefully as they grow up, they can, you know, have that memory of, like, yeah, no, they're, everybody's just people, and we can be friends, <laughs> but also then, like, being white and growing up in that structure and being racist unintentionally or, you know, perpetuating system, you know, it's complicated and all that stuff, but I did have a little bit of empathy when they're crying and watching their mom be terrible to their friend. Yeah. Yeah. That was, um, I don't know. At, I could just picture, I was just picturing my own neighborhood and just, um, neighbors and there were, you know, there were times where there were people that were, uh, you know, like would yell and scream at their kids and actually my mom, but anyway, um, my mom was a yeller, but, um, I, yeah, it just it it definitely brought back some some memories of shitty neighbors and how crappy people can be. <clears throat> but they can be nice too. And it's crazy how as a kid it can all turn on a dime. <laughs> like all of a sudden, like you're collecting rocks and all of a sudden like terrible things are happening that are completely out of your control and they're unraveling at this intense speed and i'm like that's that's kind of what being a kid felt like a lot of the time (laughs) was like i'm just coloring and then it's like oh like societal issues interpersonal issues familial issues they're all converging (laughs) at this time in, in in a really intense way um i didn't know what were mm, this is like a pointed question that isn't as pointed as it sounds what were we supposed to learn from their relationship with or kb's relationship with the neighbors next door it, it was always it was always clear to me who th- that there was racism there and that there was um unstable mother figure there and that their kids just trying to play that was the whole, and I'm like, that's the whole. It didn't, nah. Do you think I don't it, think it is definitive? Like, Please. do you mean it? It didn't, like, it didn't put move the story any, or what? What it? What was the point? Was that what? You <sighs> I'm having a hard time putting it to words. It's like, you showed me this racist family next door with a unstable mother figure, and yes, they weren't able to be friends. I think if I'm, I mean, I'm not going to try to say what I think you're trying to say, but I, I guess I think that that was the point. And I, like, I don't think that the, the white characters need to be any more developed than they were. Like, this is a, a book that's centering around a black girl. So that, but I, I feel like it was there so that KB could learn about racism but it didn't, like, it just, 
it was a little bit it just seemed like that was why it was just placed there it's not like you know like there were two parts of the story i guess but that and so i understand why that was there because that wasn't something kb had encountered before but it just it felt i don't know did you say pointed i don't know what the like it just felt like here learn this it felt a little flat to me yeah okay <laughs> Like, is that what I'm trying to say? <laughs> like, I feel like it was trying to maybe be deep in yeah. that whole, like, thing, yeah. but it also felt very, like, yep. Yeah. Yep. And maybe, <laughs> maybe there was more to it that, that got edited out or something that maybe there, who knows, but, um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, kind of like, uh, just a little dipping the toes in, uh, what, and maybe even foreshadowing what life will, could be like for you, for her, sadly. <clears throat> I feel like it was a lesson for that KB had learned. And as an adult reader, was a lesson I had learned previously. Yeah, you already knew. It didn't illuminate. Right. It didn't illuminate new. I don't know. I feel like you. I'm, I'm so close to saying exactly what I want to say that I'm like, this is good enough. <laughs> That's good enough. Yeah, I see. It's it was just just kind of another brush stroke in the you know in the picture, but not um, fully clear. But if this is a <laughs> if, if this book is meant to function uh, primarily as a snapshot of black girlhood then maybe illuminating me being illuminated at different facets of this particular relationship in the book doesn't really matter too much maybe we're just looking at it as as, as a portrait rather than something that has to be um incredibly dynamic <laughs> I feel like I just lost my thought. I hate it when that happens. It'll come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I just uh, with, yeah. Go ahead. No, you got it. Go. <laughs> with the neighbor kids, I feel like um, part of what she was learning was not only the overt racism from the mother but also that she's going to have to be careful with friendships with white people because she has had shown to her that e even your friends might not stick up for you and might not be your friend when the the time actually counts um and while that's not necessarily fair to put on two little kids across the street, I feel like it was a lesson that she's going to take with her. Yeah, and I think, I guess it does highlight too, like how much of what kids do is just a, a mirror of what they're receiving from parents and like the messaging that they're getting. And it does, the grandfather does sort of say like, our kids don't have to do, I don't know how he says it exactly, but he's like, just because, just because we did it doesn't mean our kids have to do it. They don't have to have the same lives, which I think has like a much greater context. He's even talking about like his relationship probably with his own daughter and all that. But, um, that is where he he used that line so uh yeah i think it, like she's she has to learn to navigate it because like even though someone might be her friend in the moment they're really gonna it's hard to break out of what your family has taught you and and the, that set of beliefs so um yeah it's wow. also interesting how much of childhood friendships are just based on proximity mm -hmm. oh my gosh my grandpa had a basketball court and i lived across the street from my grandpa so all the neighborhood kids would be there all the time and it's like these are my friends because they're right there 
<laughs> it's it's pretty wild. Um, but something that Anne had said in 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 that sparked something in me is that maybe that relationship between Charlotte and Bobby. I don't want to say Bobby. I don't know their names. The white children and the mother next door. Um, it's 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 the system of racism. People learn it from their parents. And then as the grandpa says, he's like, we gotta unlearn this, or like the things that we learned, we don't we don't gotta keep teaching our kids that. So it did highlight that in in, in an interesting way. So this book takes place in 1995 and I found myself wondering, I don't know if you did too, like what, how, would, why? I mean, I always wonder like, why is this book set when it's set? Uh, especially if it's not, if it's historical, if it's not focused around some greater historical event, I think that's sort of what you expect from historical fiction, but also like I was wondering what, why it was important that it was at that time and, and how it would have been different if it was like now or even, 10 years ago or five years ago. I don't know if anyone else was wondering that or just, or if it contributed to the nostalgia, I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. I have wondered about that with numerous books recently because it seems like a lot of stuff is being written in the eighties and nineties. Um, and I don't know how much of it is just a matter of not wanting to have to deal with cell phones and, uh, internet and everything that kind of changes from when, for instance, this author was a child. So especially if she was writing it as a prompt for her memories, that's probably around when she was in that age range. Uh, so that could be why specifically for her, but it definitely seems to me like technology like authors sometimes just don't want to deal with the changes <laughs> and it's easier to tell a contained story when people don't have access to everything. Yes. Um, all of that. And I, and I also wonder, I think about Detroit in 1995. I wonder if um, who the dad is reflects what was happening in Detroit at that time. I, I wouldn't know but that's something that comes to mind. I also thought it was very 1995 to go to the pool and make a whole bunch of friends. That whole thing, I don't I don't know if kids do that anymore. Like can you like do kids go to Chuck E Cheese and like make a couple friends? I don't know. But that felt very retro to me. I think they can. I think they might yeah. at pool like I mean my kids did in the mid like 2000 oh, there. Yeah. you know um we went to the pool and stuff like that but now I don't know it's a whole different world now I I do think like that you're right about the cell phones and and I also think like this one thing that's so central to the the whole creation of this story is like KB's naivete you know she's kind of gotta be that I mean that's just like the whole that's her the story her coming of age and her like growing through that and so if she had had a cell phone or the internet or any of that I mean maybe she wouldn't have had access to those things you know not everybody that's lets their kids have those or can have them but I feel like she wouldn't have been so she would have had more information maybe and maybe not had her nose buried in Anne of Green Gables. I mean, I had mine buried in Anne of Green Gables, but <laughs> that was way before 1995. Um, so I, d I did wonder, like, I did think like technology would be a big part of it and it would be a different story with technology. Yeah, I kind of figured it wasn't that deep. It was probably just when the author was that age. And I'm curious what future authors will write about with the nostalgia of the 2020s <laughs> when kids are growing up with this stuff um because even me like imagining what it would have been like to be a, that young having access to that stuff like I can't even imagine 
fully what that would be like. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you have to, you wouldn't have to ask anybody for information. You wouldn't have to learn anything from people because you could learn it, whether you're learning it correctly or not, you could learn it from some online source or from social media. I mean, you could now, so it, it would it would completely change things. I don't know if anyone else does this, but sometimes when I read books, pre you know that are not internet oriented but i'll in my head like i'll you know like say that there's a mystery and the couple is trying to meet uh but it's a storm so the back of my head is like your cell phone you know it's it's just so ingrained now but it's not i don't know if you guys do that too with other books but like it just is kind of a fleeting thought of all the you know look it up oh you can't look it up you know <clears throat> this question yeah. of technology in in media i'm a big horror movie fan and, and horror reader as well and that's something that the genre is always in conversation with or is really always challenged by because it's just like call 911 <laughs> you know <laughs> or like google like satanic ritual and like you figured it out so yeah, it, it is a really interesting question to think about when people write about um, nostalgically about the 2020s. How do you do that when there's the internet? Yeah, I see people like writing and going forward. There's so much speculation about like what will the internet do or how will we? How is this going to form us as people um, or not people? You know, but yeah, it's interesting to think of this time period with any sort of nostalgia because it's i don't know because what would you be <laughs> nostalgic about um it just it does seem interesting to think about that uh so i do wonder if anybody knows or has any thoughts about what the fireflies knew like <laughs> I, I i mean i don't know like is there a what do you think the significance of the fireflies was if any at all i mean it's a good title <laughs> coming into this conversation i was giggling to myself because i thought to myself what 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 did the fireflies mean? So I'm so glad you asked that because like I'm just kind of like sitting around like what did they know? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. Was that a line? Did she did she ever make us say you know if I knew what the fireflies knew? I I don't remember exactly if if that was straight out of a, a line that she said. I think at one point in the book it was phrased in a way that was very similar to that because I was reading and I go oh there there it is the title. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> and I had that moment. Yeah, I feel like, did she connect it to memories or am I just doing that? Like, um, like maybe that because like fireflies, you can, you can capture them, you can hold on to them for a second, but you can't always keep them in that jar. And so maybe like collecting choosing what you're going to remember i don't know i'm just Resting. i'm just spitballing yeah, here but um i do feel like there was something that she said about remembering or interacting but i could also be misremembering but she, I, would, I i wondered yeah she talked about how when you try and just grab at them you don't get anything but when you slow down then you can catch one but I don't know how that ties into <laughs> anything else. Mm -hmm. And that's what we know about fireflies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what do they know? What write? do the fireflies know? What do they know? What and maybe it just came out of, yeah, <laughs> maybe it came out of that mason jar story. Like that was, you know, just grew from there. I, I feel like the, the, caterpillars was like a more heavy-handed like obvious metaphor mm -hmm. 
So it could have been mm-hmm. one of the caterpillars. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't have the same ring to it. You know? no. yeah. yeah, it doesn't <laughs> sound as pretty. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess I just, like, when your title is a question, your readers might ask that question. So, and maybe, like, maybe it didn't have a bigger answer, but I just, um, like you, Jacob, I was just wondering, what did the fireflies know? um yeah who knows is there anything else that anyone found really striking or important um about this book that we didn't didn't get into would you recommend it to somebody I would take Marissa, you already answered that. <laughs> I would recommend it more to children than adults, I think. Mm-hmm. Just because I think it's like important developmentally to like recognize and like discuss that kind of stuff. Um mm-hmm. as adult, I think it felt a little basic, I guess. Like I don't know. It didn't thrill me or really make me have any deep questions. It wasn't terrible like it wasn't you know there were some very, like very beautiful interesting parts um but yeah i feel like there's maybe better ones that i would go for i think if somebody asked me about it i would recommend it but i don't know that it would jump off my tongue if somebody asked me for a book recommendation yeah i think it was like a come if someone was looking for a coming of age story of a young black girl, you know, and there's quite a few of those. Um, so that could be. Um and it is, I would probably, you know, we we we're able to like s- suggest books to our Library of the Blind um patrons and often just throw some books on um a cartridge. I mean not you know, in concept. And so that could be one, depending on the person that I, I might share with someone. Did anyone listen to it or did everyone read it? Oh, did you, you listen? listen? I listened you to listened. it, yeah. Yeah. Which, um, yeah, I mean, I think they did a good job with the audiobook. Like it was well produced. The narrator did a good job. Um, yeah, I don't know if I would have made it through a print version. <laughs> <laughs> it felt really long even though it wasn't that long um and maybe that's because hearing it it felt more repetitive um like I by the end every time like an ice cream the ice cream smile every time that was mentioned I was like I should have been keeping a tally list or something <laughs> <laughs> uh, did a yeah. child narrate it or did an adult narrate no it was an adult and did they See, have that's something voice? where I'm like it's, yeah. it's a child's voice but I, I don't know yeah was it a childlike voice or I've was never, it... I don't think I've ever heard I guess I don't listen to that many kids books but like are there are there children narrators yeah there's yep okay. there's a really good one that was recommended to me um by Jack Jay did he come uh his Detroit author but um it's called see you in the cosmos and it was a, an award-winning production and a, and a kid did read it. I don't know how old he is. I mean, he might've been 14, mm-hmm. but yeah. Someday. I mean, she sounded young, but yeah, okay. I don't know. Maybe that did make me feel more disjointed, like the adult voice with the child, like, um, sure. story. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that mm-hmm. subtly, subconsciously got to me <laughs> more than I Were thought. Were there other voices though, besides the one? So it was just... So the sister and the grandfather. Mm-hmm. Okay. I will say that the physical book has a lovely tactile feel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which is always good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. All right. Well, if no one else has anything to add, I think um, we're at a good 
stopping point, but I thank you all for um, for reading in it, reading it, and chatting about it. And we will. Our next book is um, what is our next book? I think it's the other black girl. It is the other oh, black is girl. Yeah. So um, very different from this one, mm -hmm. and that'll be a fun discussion. Yeah. All right. Thank you all. All right, thanks.